Okay, guys, welcome to tutorial number two of socket programming. So let's start to understand this code. So we'll be going through the theory, the prerequisites of whatever this code requires. So first of all, first things first, let's see the hash includes the files we required to write this code. So we see a quite a lot of files out there, stdio.h standard lib. I want you to read those files, sys.types sys slash types dot edge sys slash socket dot edge and net in it slash n dot edge so a lot of files and right now we don't know what they mean so first let us know what they mean so that we can really understand the code okay so let's see what these files actually so well i have just prepared a table for you so let's go through and see one by one what each file do so the first file we have is hash include stdio.h. So if you're writing a code in C, you basically can't do without stdio.h. stdio.h means std is standard, i is for input and o is for output. And dot .h signifies the header, the header file. So hash include stdio.h. You will be requiring this in most of the codes you write in C language, wherever you want to use input and output functions like printf and scanf, which are quite a necessity in all the C programs which we will be writing. Now, the second file is hash include sys slash types.h. So, what sys slash types.h uh, means is it's a system file. And this header file contains definitions of a number of data types used in system calls. So basically, what this file does is this file will help execute these two files. These two files are very important for our program, and for these two files to function, that is socket.h and netinet.h, we require types.h. So types.h is like a father to both of these files. Okay, so we are done with types.h as well. Now the third file is socket.h. So our program revolves around socket.h because our program is about socket programming. Pretty cool. So the header file socket.h includes a number of definitions of structures needed for sockets. So we get the structure socketr. So basically this structure contains SA family, address family, port address, all those things are inbuilt in this, so this is very important. So netinet.h is our fourth file. The header file in.h, which is over here, includes constants and structures needed for internet domain addresses. Soc addr underscore in. We'll be using this structure. I will show you in a minute uh, where we are using the structure. We will uh, complete this in file number five and we will go to the code and see once take a look where are the structures and how we are using them now the fifth file is std lib which stands for standard library the standard library is a very very powerful file which is included the standard library header defines four variable types several macros and various functions for performing general functions so if you don't understand anything of this no worries, because we are go only going to use one function which we require from stdlib is atoi, which converts the string pointed by the argument to an integer. So we will be requiring this for the purpose of converting a port number to integer. So let's have a look at the code. I will you will get a better underst a better understanding of why these files are included and which structures are there we need to use to write the code. So let's go to the code. So here it is. So first of all, we use this socketdr.in structure. So this structure has the, where it is, where the heck is socketdr? Nothing we are using. Okay, okay, let me find it out. Okay, I found it out. So here it is. We defined the structure over there, and now we are giving an address family inet over here. So this structure basically includes sin underscore family. 
and then I also told you about the standard library function ATOI. So this is it where we are using it. So the structures give us a lot of power the, so that we can use the functionalities of our computer. We can send data, converting it to data stream over the ports. So this is things which where you will be requiring this structures and you will be using this. So these are some of the things which I could highlight. We will get in detail about everything in our uh, next, maybe not the next one, next to next tutorial we'll start a coding. We require one more session for theory, so SOC ADDR. So this is the structure of socket.h. SOC ADDR.in is the structure of which file? Yeah, uh, netinet.h. So basically this is it about the header files which gives us a lot of power and we need to write a little code using this header files to get our code running. So this was it for this tutorial guys. See you in the next tutorial. I'll be going through the client server model. How exactly the communication takes place. We'll learn that in the next tutorial. And after that, we will be back. We will be doing the coding. We will get the crown running. And yeah, in the next next tutorial, we will finish up coding at least of the server part. So that we can, in next uh, other tutorial, we can complete with the client part and then get our first application that is of chatting ready so on a network you can chat with the girlfriend if you have one obviously unfortunately i don't have so i will have to chat with my buddies anyways that was part of a joke uh see you in next tutorial where we'll be doing client server um thank you so much jj here like share subscribe Bye bye